And there we go, a lovely way to finish the video. Start to finish, an idiot's guide to setting up a light tackle rod with an absolute lovely ballon rasp. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the rod, the reel, the line, and we're gonna go from the very start, 101, idiot's guide to LRF fishing. Start, start fresh like you've never done it before. It might help someone, might not. You might think I'm an idiot. I think I'm an idiot. We'll go from there. My weapon of choice has to be the HTO Rockfish 19 rod. These rods come in all shapes and sizes, but they're cheap. This one's a three to 15 gram rod. It's about seven foot in length. It's perfect for getting into those small nooks and crannies around harbour walls, marinas, rock, reel. I use a 1000 size Shimano Sienna. Perfect, fits the rod very well, does its job, pretty durable. Also, you want a reel that fits nicely onto your rod, gives a nice bit of balance, isn't too strenuous on your wrists, and has a nice balance for when you're fishing lighter kind of lures. If you're really that stupid, that goes in there, just like that. This bit clips into there, and it becomes nice and tight. Rod and reel, connected perfectly, nicely weighted, does the job. Let's get some line on it. When putting line onto the reel, you wanna flick your bare arm over. You don't wanna be tying your line straight onto the actual spool itself, so just give it a flick. Twang noise, mine doesn't, because it's nice and old. This one I'm using, Sunline. The sunlight hurts my eyes. This is a 0 0.8, it's about 10 pound in line. I love my bright colours when LRF fishing. I like to be able to see my line in between the rocks, like the pillars in the harbour, anywhere. It's just really nice to be able to see. 120 metres. We probably won't get all of that onto the actual reel itself, but we'll give it a go. You want to get it on as tight as possible. Now I've taken the tag end off there. You can see it's freely coming off. Next, I'm going to put the line through the first eye on the rod like so, and then it can freely pull through. Take all of that slack, and then what we're gonna do next, we're gonna tie it onto the reel itself. We're gonna take this line here, and we're gonna make a loop like this around the reel, around the reel itself, which is gonna sit just like that. That gives it a little bit more of a tighter grip on the reel, and it's just stopping it from preventing it slipping as on the spool. You're then gonna pull that tag end and put it tight onto the reel until it actually grips the reel itself there. And that is the knot completed. So moving forward of actually putting the line onto the reel, especially when using very light line with a very thin diameter, I don't wanna put too much breaking strain on it. So what I'm gonna do, I find that line grips the reel better when it's wet. So what we're gonna do, we filled in a bucket and it's about three inches of water. We're gonna put our line in there, just like so. That's gonna spin nice and freely in there, but also when it picks up the water, it's gonna grip onto the reel. When it goes onto the reel, it contracts and squeezes onto the barrel of the reel. That will stop any kind of wind knots or twists of the line going forward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly just wind this on. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna hold the line just up here on the rod, just to give it a little bit of tension. As you can see, the line is actually filling up nicely on the reel. Always good to make sure at the start that the lay of the line is equal on the barrel. You don't want it to start preloading at the bottom and being thin at the top, that's gonna to cause issues in the long run, when not to so always make sure it is actually on there. With a brand new reel, it should be perfect. I keep mine quite well though, so let's carry on. So as you can probably see, I've just got my finger on it so the line doesn't actually roll off but we have just slightly underfilled it. 
I would not recommend filling it up over the lip. It doesn't matter if you don't use all the line, there's probably only about 10 meters of line left on there, but that's looking absolutely perfect. 10 pound braid, 1000 reel, about 110 meters of line on there. Absolutely perfect for what we're gonna be doing. Let's tie a small kind of leader knot. Moving forward, we're gonna add some fluorocarbon to it. We're gonna join the two lines together using this and the braided line that we've just put onto the reel. Depending on occasions or circumstances that we're fishing, I would go from anything from a four pound up to a 20 pound. The only time I'd use a 20 pound is where I know there are bigger fish and I've seen bigger fish around or we're fishing some really dirty, skinny kind of ground where I know that any kind of abrasion off my leader is gonna snap me off. So let's get some of this on, tie the lines together and we'll go from there. So we're gonna tie this braid to this fluorocarbon. We're gonna use a uni to uni knot. Hopefully that you can actually make this out and see it. But by the end of it, these are two are gonna be binded together. To start off with, double your braid. So it's like a loop like that and just give it a slight twist and just wet it so it binds and sticks together. The reason I've done that, it kind of doubles the braid to make it a little bit stronger in the knot itself. I find if you use one actual lace of the braid itself, it can sometimes actually slip through the knot and pull out. Take your fluorocarbon, lay them across each other to make an X, just like so. Leave this tag end over there, and I just find gripping onto them like that is so much better. Again, like we've done with the reel, you are gonna tie, make a loop like so, but hold it. You are then gonna hold the tag end, and you are gonna overlay it through that loop, like so, and around the braid and the fluorocarbon. I usually do that six times. Perfect. That's gonna wrap around the actual lines themselves. And then I'm gonna slowly pull these two tag ends away, holding this end. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna tighten that knot up and become nice and strong together. I don't know if you can see that now, but that's it. Okay, then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Hold both tag ends there. In that hand, you know that knot's there now to secure it, you're fine. You are now gonna make a loop again, like so. Hold those. Bring that tag end through that loop, combining the, the actual fluorocarbon and the braid. Like so again. You're gonna hold the tag end. This time, you're gonna pull the tag end of the fluorocarbon. This is gonna slowly bring them together. Give it a little bit of moisture on both sides. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull these two together. Once the tag ends are actually tied together like so, hopefully that you can see that, there are gonna be some slight tag ends actually off the end. This is where I would recommend a jet lighter. and Just burn the edge. And there you have it. Two lines tied perfectly together. Nothing too fancy, nothing too special. We are only fishing for lighter, small kind of fish, so an FG is just a bit of overkill for this. I would usually have about three foot of fluorocarbon. Nothing too much, nothing too small, something to kind of work off with. And just in case, if you do break off, you do have a chance of retying and using that leader again. We have our fluorocarbon on. We have assembled the rod. We've added the reel. We've relined the reel. We've added a fluorocarbon leader. Now we're gonna have to add something to the end so we can add a kind of lure to it. I know everyone has their own type of way of tying their lures, but I like to mix up my lures as much as possible. So I'm gonna use this small little clip. Easy to take a lure on and off and very robust and don't break very easily. As you can probably see, there is a loop at the bottom. It's like a upside down eight. You want the smaller loop at the bottom and the bigger one at the top. You're gonna put the actual line 
through the loop and I'm going to use something what I call a fisherman's knot. You are going to lay the lines together just like so and with your tag end you are going to bring that back around again and make a loop. Again, just like you did before with the braid and the fluoro when actually tying the leader, you are going to bind them two together like so. Going to go for it three times. You are then going to pull the tag end and that away from each other so the knot sits perfectly just like that. Lick it and then just pull the main body of the fluoro away from the actual clip itself and that knot is going to tighten down on the clip like so. Cut off your loose end. Burn the end, always burn the end of my knot just so if it, it does one day pull through, it stops at the blob, that knot shouldn't pull out. We are now ready to put a lure on there. These are my kind of go-to LRF lures. These will fish for anything from pollock to bass to pouting to wrasse to gurnard and even flounder on the bottom. What we're going to use at the end is just our conventional jig head. This is going to be at the business end. I pick up a pack of these. These are seven gram jig heads from Mr. Fish. Get them for about two pound for a packet. These are perfect. You want to use something that's in line with the weight of the rod. This one's three to 15. This is seven grams, so this fits perfectly in the middle. What we're gonna do is we are gonna add one of these worms. As you can see, this is like a sandworm. It's a little bit fluorescent. And what I'm gonna do is just cut the end off. Make sure the cat doesn't get that bit. We are then gonna slide this onto the hook shaft. You're gonna go in through this part here and just thread it like you would for a lugworm or a red cat if you're fishing with bait just till it's pretty much over the U-bend. Once it's just over that U-bend, bring that hook point out like so, and then just slide it over the jig head itself. So it sits nice and flush on the jig head, the hook point is nice and exposed, and the worm can do its thing. That is my go-to setup. Next, you just need to add the lure to your clip. Like I was saying before, the small loop is at the bottom and the big loop is at the top. This bottom bar is gonna keep it there so it cannot move. There you have it, Shaggies. Your lure presented nicely with a clip on your fluorocarbon to your rig. So there you have it. We've gone from rod, putting it together, bit of a dummy's guide to be honest. Added the reel. We've then spooled the reel itself with this 10 pound braid, making sure that it stays onto the reel perfectly using the water. We've then added the fluorocarbon to it using a uni to uni knot, added a link, added the lure. That's the go-to, that's the how-to, and hopefully we can go catch some fish. So we've now set up the rod. We've made it to our destination where we're gonna fish. I've chose the harbor. Uh, it's on Jersey's north coast somewhere out the wind it's blowing a strong southerly today so I've just nipped out to try and get a fish on the light setup that we've just created as I was saying we've got the rockfish the 1000 reel the fluorocarbon and the small lure on a jig head hopefully we can get a fish show you that the setup actually works and then you can go and use it again in your own time let's do this what we're gonna do is flick the bell arm over give it a cast I'm gonna let the line come off the reel, let it sink to the bottom, flick the bare line back over, and just and just tighten up my slack. As you can see, the rod is nice and straight, always keeping tension on the line, so when the line's falling with the lure, you can feel the lure and any touches by any fish. I'm gonna keep winding up until it's on the bottom, which it is now. All I'm going to do is slowly reel it in and just flick my lure. All I'm going to do is slowly bring it in and just flick my lure. Just keeping that lure off the bottom and just touching, seeing if we can pick up anything. Always keeping control of the rod. 
always keeping intact with the lure. The more you keep intact of it, the more you're going to get a feel if a fish actually takes it. Different techniques I like to use are, especially with the light kind of rods, it's something that I call teabagging. Literally like you're teabagging a teabag, dunking it into your cup of tea. Literally doing that up and down the wall. A lot of time the fish are sometimes very close to the wall. Oh, and we've got our fish, I think. Oh yes, we've got a good fish. Not what I was expecting, this is a good fish. And that's how teabagging works. As you can see, the rod is taking a lot of the brunt. It's very light stuff, this. And as you can see there, we have a wrasse. Perfect. And there we have it. From not even having the set up, to everything assembled, and to putting it into practice and catching a fish. This is a native species to Jersey and the UK. This is a Ballon Ras, absolutely gorgeous. You'll find these around any of the harbour walls, in rock pillars, anywhere where there's a bit of structure, these guys will be around. As you can see, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flick the lure out. A lot of the fish, when you're light lure fishing, are very close to the structure. This is why I said it's very good to have a smaller length in rod, so you can get around these rocks that are underneath these submerged rocks and against the wall. So let's hope we can get another one. Let the line out. All the way to the bottom, reel in your slack. Leave it and just teabag and just teabag and just teabag. Teabag, 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 teabag. This time there's a big submerged rock just here, but there's a channel that runs down the side. Another tip is to have some polarized sunglasses so you can actually see the rock much better or anything under the surface. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast along the seawall and in between, in between the actual gully itself. Nothing special, just a small flick. Line comes off the reel again. Flick it over, make sure the line sits perfectly. And now we're gonna just teabag that again, slowly against the wall. Oh, and I've got a good fish. Good fish, oh, oh, I've got a good fish. A really good fish. Oh, oh, I might snap me off this. Oh, yes. <laughs> Look how good fun this looks on the light gear. Perfect, again, this is a much better fish for this size of rod. There you go. And what we're going to do, we're just going to walk this down because this is a bigger fish. We're going to walk this down. Be careful because the rocks are slippy. And then I'm going to hand him up with the line. And this is what we've just caught. Absolutely perfect on the light gear. You've seen it running. It's taking that lure again, right in the corner. That's the thing with a light lure. You can really get it down there and let it float down nice and slowly. This one is a little bit of a darker shade. You can see the light blue spots all the way along. These things are built to kill, man. They are great fun on light rods. And just for a picture, why not? <laughs> light rod sharp, rash fishing. It's just about to get windy, but we've got our goal. Lovely little fish. Let's get back. Let's just bring this in while we talk. For me, when I come to light rock fish, make sure you've got the appropriate setup. Doesn't have to be expensive. When you're fishing a spot or a new spot, cover as much area as possible, but always have a pair of polarized sunglasses so you can see what's underneath the water layers, any structure, any rocks fish tend to be in those kind of areas and on a pier my biggest tip is always fish along the wall parallel with it usually the fish are close to the wall 
or close to the actual structure. I think I have a fish here. Yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> look at that. While we're doing an outro, we've caught a fish. Oh, he feels all right as well. There we go. Outro fish. It's a wrasse. That thing is really putting a nice bend into this reel. Could be the same fish. He's angry. <sighs> and there we go. A lovely way to finish the video. Start to finish. An idiot's guide to setting up a light tackle rod with an absolute lovely ballon ras. It's actually a different fish. Look at the reds on that. Lovely colour. A beautiful marked fish. These go like absolute sh of a shovel, man, on light gear. So we've set up the rod, we set up the reel, we reline the reel, we tied the fluoro, put the lure on, and this is the end of the product. Great fun, great laugh. I've literally popped out to try and get a couple of fish, got a few bangers, and there you go, perfect.